Here we are. Uh, we're in Cor Cornwall. Uh, Truro, in fact, in Cornwall. I'm in the hotel. Uh, no videos or clips of going over bridges or down the motorways or, uh, uh, you know, drone shots, nothing at all. The fact is that the reason I'm down here is I'm here to meet a very inspirational landscaper, um, a brilliant guy. There's more to him that meets the eye and... Uh, uh, he's very successful this, down this part of the world and uh, he is a big part of the group and without a doubt a big part of uh, my life and a lot of the other guys' lives now because his stuff is absolutely second to none and uh, I'm going to meet uh, Glenn Humphreys. Good morning from uh, Cornwall. Um, didn't do uh, many uh, videos last night with the guys. Uh, met the guys and had a few few beers. There was quite a few turned up, and uh, that's positive in itself. And uh, good guys. And uh, it's always the same thing when you ever you, you meet up with uh, other landscapers or other contractors that do the daily grind like you do. You share a lot in common, and uh, it was very very interesting. And uh, now today i'm going with glenn we're going to visit a few of the the guys that we met last night and we're going to go around and have a look at their work and maybe i've got my boots and we're going to help out a little bit they're not steel toe cap right I want you to tell me again what that building is there, Glenn. Well, that's our, our little cabin that's just been put in and it's going to become a little mini showroom for some of our Marshalls products. We've just had uh, Marshalls deliver some new up-to-date products, uh, a little bit of a revamp, and it uh, should be up and going just before Easter. And does, does that work well with you and clients come down? Like, we, you know? we find it works really, really well. What we actually do is, is uh, invitation only. Most of our clients actually come in through um, and we actually come in, sit down around a cup of tea. We can show them three or four different types of uh, paving and samples. Uh, it's a nice sort of like relaxed atmosphere and then what we can do is we can actually mock up a little display uh, garden actually out on site or actually in one of the large barns for them. Oh, the fact, I think the fact is that they can see how serious you are as well. Hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who am I talking to? Jamie. Jamie, Jamie what, do you, what do you do for Glenn? Um, You've had um, a chat about it. Yeah, but... I'm the landscape supervisor, mm. so I just oversee everything that Glenn you know, is not there to see. Or I need to take over when Glenn's, you know, away on business trips or you know, seeing customers. Just overseeing the general daily running of the company in the yard. I know we spoke about it. But how many guys have you got working with you down here? Uh, just one thing is, it's about ten to twelve. Yeah, and it's Most private and uh, commercial stuff. Yeah, private, private gardens, commercial work. You know, we do do a bit of tree work where we contract chap in to sort of help us out. Okay. Um, you know, flailing tractor work. We do uh, do our thing really. I know you're coping with the silly season now already. Uh, it's been hectic the last couple of weeks. It's only going to get worse. Yeah. So you just got to prepare yourself. And, you know, we got the guys who can cope with it. But there's good, uh, good stress and bad stress, isn't there? Yeah, it's, it's good stress because you know you want plenty of work on. You don't want to be you know idle. So uh, it's, it's good all round, really. Cheers. Get it there. Stop. I want to see a gate pass. Who, who have we got here? Uh, Rich. We, had, we were out last night, Rich. Yeah, we had a couple right. of bike beans. Did you keep up with me with the beer? No, no. <laughs> no I had a couple went over. <laughs> so where are you off today? Uh, we're off to Mount Hawk. Just finishing a fencing job. What sort of fencing? Feather edge? Or? Yeah, feather edge. Yeah. yeah. We had to wall up, wall up the bottom bit and then build a fence on top. On how, how far apart the posts? Uh, 1.8. That's me as well. Yeah. <laughs> how deep? How deep? Let's just check it. Uh, 600, but that's below yeah. ground level. Now's the time to say what you really feel about Glenn, like yeah, you know. So, man. yeah, there we are. Yeah, we're so, lucky to have him as a boss, yeah, brilliant. <laughs> have a good day. Yeah, Cheers, yeah. Well, I'm in Glenn's yard now. They probably think I'm Louis Theroux doing this uh, 
this film is. But I've got to say, it's uh, really interesting watching Glenn and his staff, and it's a hive of activity here this morning. The vehicles coming out, they're loading uh, product on, loading paving, um, they're loading plant, and it's, it's everybody knows where they are, and they're organised. And uh, God, took me out off to them. What, what we got here? Oh, this is a new, uh, new water boy which we picked up recently um, because we're doing so much uh, paving with porcelain what we tend to do is use a flow point product or equivalent product and then uh, when it's actually done it's actually so much easier to clean it off um, you're not causing so much water running off and spillage going off going into drains and everything like that and you don't want that to because with a flow point it's going to it's going to it'll block the drains so normally right. you would dig a sump pit or you have a wash off area which you would then clean up and tidy up again because we're at the back gardens, there's not that sort of space to do that. It's a really, really good product for it, and it takes a lot of that so much buffing and so much. Right, uh, without yeah. sounding a bit silly, right, I, I know what you meant, but obviously, right, but at some point, you know, these are the things you have to think about when you're using this type of product. Uh, what we tend to do then is if we're doing an area, we normally dig a hole at the edge of the actual paving, which will be just a temporary thing, right, yeah. where the water will run in through, we let that drain away, and then any silt or excess flow point over on that is then can be collected up and taken away, and then disposed of, and it saves it contaminating the ground around it for the plants. Absolutely, and that, that's that's one of the a massive bugbear for any horticulture or any gardener is that when the hard landscaping is done and there's cement residue everywhere, it's not very good for the plants, is it? Not at all. Not at all. Ninety yeah. percent of it is uh, is if you want to amalgamate a garden with a really nice hard landscaping scheme, you need conditions right. So you need decent topsoil, you need fertile topsoil, and you need uncontaminated topsoil. They're not going to grow in whether to do a flow point cement no or not at all like i got to ask that machine there what sort of money would you pay for that i think we picked that machine up and i think it was somewhere around about 620 ish quid and, and delivered and installed oh you get the results for it yeah i think it, i think it'll pay for itself in no time the amount of time it'll spend on hours on either with sponges cleaning off or like pressure washer washing down through it's all about you know trying to work efficiently work smart not hard would i be say right in saying that it actually looks quite impressive with the clients and it justifies what yeah. you do yeah well, very much so if, if you're laying a high-end product the client are looking for a high-end finish if you're it's a bit like everything really if you're turning up with a bent spirit level and a bucket with a hole in it it doesn't work if you turn up with a machine that's equipped and ready to do the job it's just only going to set the right image to start off it speaks with. volumes doesn't it, it? Speaks volumes, yeah. right let's go and have a look then shall we right thank you <laughs> Tell me what you just said now about this plant. What is it? And well, what have we got here on, on the top of there? Why has it gone like that? Well, this is a agave maracana. It's a succulent plant. Um, basically, what's happened is it's caught a little bit of frost in the uh, recent weather, and it's actually caused a little bit of stress through the shop, and actually the plant's actually folded on itself. A little bit of uh, rock setting in through. What we would actually do is either cut this off, but as horticulturalists, we would take a look at the shape and form of the plant, the plants go into a V sort of shape, so what we would do is actually try to mirror the same sort of image, so we would actually take this into a V, and it would just try and make the plant look a little bit more natural than what it actually is. And will, will, it, will it, the scar tissue, will it eel over? Will it? Yeah, so you've probably seen the side of it, they normally weep for a little bit, and they're already quite fleshy, this one already is already solid. On right, the edges, okay. And you can actually push your fingers back in for it, and it will actually callus over and then the chlorophyll the natural plant will actually grow back over and it will go the same sort of colour as what the actual leaves are anyway. Right, okay. So it's just a way of keeping the, the plant in check a bit. But it's, it's definitely worth keeping, isn't it? Very, very much so. A plant like this, as you're probably looking at 10, 10 to 15 years old, its uh, retail value on a plant like this would be probably over a thousand pounds. It's something that when you're doing a landscape scheme and if you've got it there and you've got it set up, it's well worth it. It's a real specimen plant, isn't very it? Very much so, yeah. Well, here we are. We're in, where are we? We're in St Agnes. St Agnes. And how far is that from Truro now? Ten minutes. Yeah. yeah. And the beach, how far is the beach from here? Two minutes that way. Yeah. yeah. So right on the north coast. So who am I talking to? I'm Dan. This is Tom. Tom. Uh, what are we doing, Tom? I think I said to Steve. Uh, a bit of block work. Doing a bit of block work for a race. Yeah. yeah. Standing here talking. I'll stand yeah. <laughs> we're, um, yeah, we're building a plant, uh, raised planter. Um, I'm a little bit more east. Right, okay. And we'll be putting in... So you do Glenn's all the hard landscape stuff, yeah? Hardscapes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We'll go across and help with the gardening side of things. Yeah. But, um, yeah, 99% of the time. We're, we're like How long have you been on this project now? How long have you been here now? Two weeks now. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks yeah. Enjoying it? 
Yeah, it's good. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garden, yeah. And you're laying porcelain from. Marshalls, that's yeah. what you're yeah, Marshalls, yeah. Marshalls Symphony. Yeah. yeah. So, who's on the shovel? Who does all the all the back breaking stuff? Normally, we all sort of chip in. But, um... Is that because he's the youngest, is it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. <very> much. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with being the youngest, is it? Well, it seems like we have to borrow all of the materials in from the van site, so we all chip in doing that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, how long you guys work for Glen now? Uh, I've been about a year now. Yeah, enjoying yeah. it? Yeah, enjoying it. Yeah. I with somebody else before, but, yeah. Enjoying it. Yeah. yeah, and yourself, Dan? I've been here. I'm only forty. Yeah. I lose track. Forty, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, very good, very good. Enjoying it. Landscaping before you come here as well? Uh, no, it's sort of general legend. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, uh, no, it's very good. Enjoy it. Thank you very much. That's all right. Just watching guy, uh, Glenn talk to the guys over there and you can see that they've got the utmost respect for him and uh, it's uh, quite impressive uh, how Glenn gives the instructions, he does it uh, respectfully and but they listen and they listen in intently and uh, it's good to see. Keep doing this, you know that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. We're on a project now. Where are we? St Agnes. St Agnes, right, okay. This project now, how's it going? What you can see what the guys have done this morning. Yeah. How do you feel? Uh, it's going okay. We've got a few so alterations and changes which invariably happens with the clients. Um, they're on target. The garden was uh, completely grown in this time last week, so the shapes, the forms, they're ready to go. Probably within another three, four days, we'll have the substrates and the actual backbone of the garden in place. And uh, we'll be doing finishing detailing from beginning of the next week onwards. So it's well on target. Do you check every day or every other day? No, 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 no. I trust my boys. They know. They know what needs to be happening. They know the. They know how long the job should be taking. Um, I always say, all the farm. If you don't push your boys, you get the result you're looking for. If you push your boys, they um, sometimes would think they need to meet the goal a little bit too quick, and uh, you end up maybe making some alterations that you're not happy with. Um, so I tend to keep an eye on it every two to three days and I see the clients at least once or twice a week just to make sure everything's okay. But as anybody knows me, the clients can phone me 24 hours a day and I'll talk landscaping to them, so it's <laughs> always a good point of call. But yeah, no, this one's well... So you're confident then? Confident on this one, yeah. Confident on this one. Good. This one, high-end products, so it's all porcelain paving. It's the sort of thing that you want to give the time to the guys to do it right, because if you've got a premium product, you need to do a premium job to it. So Absolutely. You know, and the design on this one, did you... The design on this one was in-house. This was actually done concept by me and then finished through by one of my uh, workers who actually drew the design up. And then it's been tweaked two or three times with the client to actually get what they want. And uh, on site, unfortunately, there's a couple of little tweaks happening on site, which we have no problems with. But it's the sort of thing that we normally like to have everything bat and braced. So once it's sprayed out, it goes from scratch. Um, We've known these clients quite a long time, so I don't think we're going to have any major problems with it. But nine out of ten times, we like to have a, a design, 100% bat and braced, sprayed out, and actually done from a drawing, fixed drawing, and then there's no, no changes, no swapping around too much. But minimal changes anyway, so it shouldn't be too. But isn't it the case that good design will always change anyway? Good, good design will always change, yeah. Yeah. And concepts are always You can on improving, can't you? Oh, very much so. Very much so, yeah. Very much so. The only thing you do want to make sure is you don't have, I'd like to change it to something, and then two days later they want to change it back. No. It didn't quite quite work, their idea. So sometimes it's, it's if the idea works, it's good to have a change. If you know the idea is not going to work, sometimes you've got to stand by your guns and say the reason why we want to do this is because the shape and the form of the garden is a certain shape. The flow of the garden, the aspect of the garden how things are merged together is the reason why you do things. Hmm. If you try and put a different dog leg in it, thinking it'll look better, are you actually going to walk down a path that's actually going slightly the wrong direction before you go to where you want to go? It's all about the flow in the garden. Yeah, and you've got to have some 
unity and, and flow yes. and uh, cohesiveness, yes, all those yes. design principles. And if you're playing with curves and angles, you need to try and get a curve coming off it. If the lawn's coming in, you want to bring the lawn back into the same curve. You don't want to end up with different Maui points and different start and finish points. So if you're having a bit of a natural design like this one is, everything's going to be curved. Even the paving's got a detailed curves in it and inset details on it. Everything needs to marry off all on one point and it needs to flow from that one point. So everything needs to lead, lead back to one point in the garden. Is there a good feel with this? Good gut feeling, yes. Good yeah. gut feeling. I'll be happy. I'll be happy when I know they've got the end of the week and we've got all of the uh, edging in and shaping. And then I know we can have another one more week of getting the soil in before we get in too much more bad weather. And I've noticed here, you're, you're, you're working from the top and you're working out, aren't you? Yes, yes, very much so. Finish as you go. So what the guys are actually doing, they've actually done the pavement at the top. That'll be pointed next, uh, beginning of next week with the path and all being finished this week. Topsoil will go in next week. Uh, once the topsoil is done, the moon gate will actually go in and that area will be handed over to the garden, completely finished. Um, and then the boys will stay in this half of the garden. And the idea is, is once we actually finish through, we'll end up with one track in, one track out, and you literally pave as you go out. So we should never, ever, hopefully, walk over the pavement that we've only laid two days ago. Absolutely, and that's what you don't want to be doing, do you? You know, that's why I always keep a sponge in a bucket with sponge me. In a bucket, yeah. Sponge in a bucket, sponge in a bucket. Most or, important tools. Or one good thing is, if you've got thousands of off-cuts of AstroTurf or something like that, they make really good mats to wipe your feet on as you walk in and out. Yeah, the totally. i got to ask, you're going to have to make up that area over there with some soil, aren't you? Yes. The soil that you you bring in, how do you ensure that that soil that you're importing is is what you want it to be? Right. Okay. So what we tend to do is we use a local supplier um, of topsoil. What they do with the topsoil is they put it through a screening system, so they take out any debris and any stones which are uh, anything bigger than around about um, 1.5 centimeters. Um, what the soil then done is stacked and it's kept there for about two to three years to make sure that any weed seeds which actually sat okay. in there on the surface are sprayed off and uh, we, they allow a little bit of heat to actually get into the soil by mixing a bit of organic matter with it. By doing that what the soil actually does is it pasteurises so it doesn't sterilise so you don't kill the soil but it pasteurises it so it takes out a lot of the weed seeds. What we will be doing on this garden though is we're in the right time of year for actually planting and uh, turfing and seeding we'll actually put that one in through, but we'll actually let the soil sit there for about two, two to three weeks, and then any, what we class as annual weeds, or weeds that are gonna come up really, really quick at this time of year, we can do a stale seed bed. So we can actually put it down, prepare it, leave it, allow the weed growth to grow, come in with a chemical and spray it off through, or hurry it off through if the client doesn't want to use chemicals. And then what we can actually do then is re-prepare the surface, we get the levels right because it's going to consolidate a little bit more and then uh, lay the turf straight over the top of it. Yeah, because you see all too often yeah. people laying turf too fast and the soil they bring in, yeah. you could end up having some Japanese knotweed in it, couldn't you? Could you? Do, yeah, yeah. And it's all yeah. about getting certified soil. Again, all the soil, before it comes to us, we make sure it's got the British standard on it and it's all fully certified for, again, especially in Cornwall, things like arsenic content. Um, and uh, you know pathogens or anything like that, they can actually do a good pH test on it as well. Most of the soil in Cornwall is brilliant. It's run about neutral. It's six, six point five. Right. Uh, so that it'll take turf really, really quite well. You can actually grow your ericaceous camellias and rhododendrons in it without adding too much ericaceous uh, compost to it, and it gives a good what we class as a medium to actually plant in. All right. Well, thanks for that because that's important. That's a really important point that you made there. Sorted. Cheers. How's you get on, Glenn? Lovely, looking lovely, yeah. It's been a really good, considering some really bad weather when you ripped this out. Yeah. Did you do the wall as well? Yeah, there was an existing wall here. So what we've actually done, there was an old dead Escalonia hedge, a privet hedge in it, which had uh, jacked the wall and uh, damaged the wall. And uh, so what he done is he ripped the hedge out, which obviously invariably knackered the rest of the wall. So he's uh, reused the same stone and rebuilt the wall. So it's not the best of stone, but it's given a, a better finish. And this, this wall in is indicative of Cornwall, isn't it? Part of Cornwall, yeah, it's, it's natural. It's a bottling stone. Um, originally, Cornwall would come from somewhere like Calliwith or something like that. Um, yeah, it's a natural sort of product. You see it around all the hedgerows in, uh, in Cornwall, really. Will you plant on the top of it? Or? Uh, I think the plan, what they actually do is not, not so much planting. It's going to be more like a strip of grass. And I think it's going to be things like fish berries and uh, snowdrops and a few uh, um, daffodils, maybe a few tulips. Really, really low maintenance.
Yeah, they, it won't take long before things start growing no, in it. Really. No, no, no. And the growth keep, keeps the wall together? It holds it together, yeah. yeah uh, two different ways of looking at it. You can either let a wall grow in and then you allow the actual root growth to actually um, form the wall nice and tight and actually hold all the stones in. Or you keep it dead clean and uh, just keep an eye on it as, as you keep it dead clean you don't leave too much soil in it. Okay. And what we like to see is we like to see a, normally we'd like to see a row of jacks on top. Uh, the row of jacks on top actually then that's, seal. That's the upright stone, yeah. That's the upright, so it's either vertically upright or you do jacks and deals, which are the 45 degree angle ones. We like to see that be put on top because the actual saw goes between the jacks and actually this stabilizes the top of the wall. What might happen here is, is uh, as people if people go up and down actually walk along the top of the wall, they might buckle the top of okay. the wall um, Hence why I think this is going to go down the line to turf on the top. Turf on the top, yeah? Turf on the top, yeah. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. That's a Typical character of Cornwall, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, yeah. Part of Cornwall. Part of Cornwall. Well, here I am. I'm absolutely shattered. Um, I'm here uh, north of uh, Exeter on the M5. I'm heading home now. It's, um, I think it's about six o'clock and uh, totally worn out. I had a fantastic day though. Um, and I've got to take my hat off to Glen Humphreys. I was hoping to bring more content uh, on the vlog. But we haven't stopped it. We've been absolutely flying. Not, not physically working, but just going around. And uh, we had a good meet up uh, in the Manning's Hotel in uh, Truro. And um, I was over the moon with the, the guys that, that turned up there. I think there was about 10 guys that actually turned up, maybe even more. And then on top of it, what Glenn did today was he was. Um, he was able to take me around and see a lot of other guys that couldn't make it last night so uh, made a full use of the day and even took me some of the jobs that his guys are working on and uh, got to say the way Glenn is it's it's brilliant I mean he's totally focused 100% um, on the ball with everything he does and he's he's absolutely inspirational if there was ever a word that would be underused it is with Glenn he is uh, He's where I would have liked to be many years ago, and it's a bit late for me now with what I'm doing. But as a business and, and, a, and a business model, of what he's done is, is absolutely brilliant. It's, it's something to aspire to. Uh, the quality of his work, his, his whole approach, and even his guys that work for him are absolutely inspirational. And that's the only thing I can say is they're on the ball, they're totally focused, and it's like a, a family. It is like a really tight family. They're all there and they're all working for each other and uh, it was great to see. And uh, the good thing about what we've done as the group, as the Landscape and Survival Group, is that we've brought a lot of landscapers together and uh, you know, all across the country, guys are meeting up and they're all talking to each other now and uh, it's that feeling that movement what's going on at the moment is what gives landscapers a little bit more confidence and a little bit more control about how they go about things and who they buy off etc etc because they know that they've got uh, a good group of guys and girls around them so 
if you're watching this video thanks Glenn Glenn Humphreys you're an absolute star and I really really appreciate but I'm looking shattered all the best thanks for the meetup cheers Glenn <laughs>